prosperous love. Prosper Kuma Frempa is the name of my soon-to-be husband. Before I left New Mexico to come to Ghana, the Lord had let me know that I would meet my husband in Africa. He also let me know that it would happen quickly. I remember sitting at my desk at the house in Taos, crying because I was afraid. Afraid to love and to allow someone to love me for fear of being deceived and hurt. As I cried, I heard the Lord in my thoughts say, I did not name you after one of the greatest love stories in the Bible to give you a snake. When the Lord speaks to me, he does it through many avenues. At that time, I had been told quite a few times by different people that I would meet my husband in Africa and that it would happen quickly. Even the young man at the grocery store said to me one day, you'll go to Africa and marry a rich man. Something in my heart told me that it, that it was true. The Lord uses people as his mouthpiece to speak words into your life. Even the way I got the name Ruth, the Lord used Brother Leo for that. One day he went to call my name, but instead of Helena, he called me Ruth. Even when he tried to correct himself, he couldn't bring his lips to utter, utter my name correctly. At that moment, I knew that was the name the Lord had chosen for me. I prayed in my heart to the Lord that if this is the name that you want me to have, make it clear. That night, I dreamt of a cousin, a cousin I have that is lovingly known as Booty. Yes, Booty, but her real name is Ruth. I knew from that dream that this was the name the Lord had chosen for me. Mother Claire gave me the nickname Ruthie, and it was history after that. The story of Ruth and Boaz has always intrigued me and amazed me, and I wondered, Lord, are you going to give me a rich man to marry? I didn't want a rich man myself, because I'm keenly aware of the mindset of people with riches. I've seen how they treat and look down on others of lesser means, and I wanted no parts of it. I would have been just fine with a poor, loving, kind man. But we have our plans, and the Lord has his own, right? Anywho, I was so convinced that I would meet my husband in Africa that I purchased clothing to prepare for when I met him. So now the time had come for me to take my journey to Ghana. I stayed at Mother Elisha's aunt house with her, where Mother Elisha's wedding took place. One day, after leaving the dress fitting for Mother Elisha, her aunt came to pick us up with her driver. I carried our things to the car, and a skinny, handsome chocolate man loaded the things in the vehicle. I greeted him in his native language. At the same, I said, which means how are you in tree? He laughed and responded in his language and explained to me how to respond as he laughed as I repeated what I was taught. I remember him asking as he waited in the car for mother and her aunt to come out. He says, are you people done? In America, to say anything starting with you people is rude, but that's not how he meant it. I wondered to myself, did he have something else to do? Or was this his vehicle he was driving? Because how is he gonna rush somebody and this ain't even his car? <laughs> well, unknowingly to me or him, he was my husband, this little skinny chocolate man in the next two weeks of being at the aunt's house, our communications were very short and cordial. I didn't know it, but he was observing me as Boaz observed Ruth gleaning the fields. We even took a few pictures together, still unaware of the love story that was unfolding before our eyes. I myself didn't even think he spoke good English because he was so quiet and to himself. The last day I was to leave the house, he came to me speaking in very good English. I was a bit taken back, honestly. I laughed and told him he had tricked me. I thought we had a language barrier. He very clearly explained to me that he had been watching me and that he liked how I treated people around me and strangers alike. He proceeded to give me both of his phone numbers and made it very clear he wanted to get to know me further. I felt in my heart this man, he's not playing around. He was very direct and serious. I had to at least give him a chance. I told him that he would have to talk to Mother Elisha and her husband and make his intentions plain to them. 
He went right away to speak with them, but Mother Elisha was not having it. She didn't feel that it was from the Lord. We started communicating right away, and we fell for each other very quickly. After a week of intense questions and getting to know each other, Mother Elisha suggested that we go on a fast to seek the Lord, that it was indeed his will. I explained to him what Mother Elisha had proposed, and without question, he was on board. The fast consisted, consisted of us not communicating for seven days, and we wouldn't eat until 5 p.m. for seven days. Man, that was a long, hard seven days. During the fast, the Lord gave me so much confirmation that this was indeed my husband. The Lord led me to look up the name meaning of Boaz, and when I did, I found the meaning of the name means swiftly. That was confirmation of what the Lord had told me before I left New Mexico, that I would meet my husband and everything would move quickly. I read further and found that Ruth was married to Boaz at 40 years old, of which I had just turned on July 4th. I also had a dream of seeing Prosper's hand presenting a pair of clear heels to me. In the dream, I knew that I was the only one who could fit those shoes. The Lord speaks to us how we can understand it. How we can understand it, you see. Since I was a little girl, I've always loved love stories and happy endings. My favorite love movie is The Notebook. I felt the Lord was telling me that he was writing me my very own love story. By the time the fast was over, I was suffering much from not being able to hear <laughs> to hear my honey's voice. Unknowingly to me, he was suffering much also. When we spoke finally, he explained that he felt like he was in jail and that his feelings had grown almost unbearable to the point he wanted to end the fast and called me to proclaim his love for me. He said he knew he had to be a man of his word and do what he said he would do. Turns out this man has never fasted a day in his life. And not only did he fast, he fasted an extra hour because he misheard the time I had given him. And he did the fast with no shortcuts. He stuck to it. I can't say the same for myself, but that's neither there nor here. So moving on. After the fast, I was immediately engaged with no ring. The Lord even revealed to Mother Elisha in the dream that this was indeed my husband. The whole mountain community were praying and discerning also. Within the next two weeks, I was in my fiance's hometown, meeting his parents and his siblings, his closest friends, and whoever he could introduce me to. He was very proud to present me as he has never brought a woman home to his family ever in his life. When I tell y'all this man loves him some Ruthie, it's an understatement. Nobody can tell this man anything about me unless it's good. He literally thinks I'm a queen and addresses me as such. Ohima, which is queen and tree, is what he calls me. He explained that he had met many, many women because of his profession in soccer. He is very well known and popular. Honestly, he is a bit of a celebrity where he's from. He told me, he told me in the past he had chased women for their shapes and their appearance, but he had always ended up hurt. This time he was very cautious and wise and rather looked at my heart. I remember him asking me what I wanted in a husband, and I told him that I didn't want a stingy man because the Lord had called me to help those in need and that I needed a man who would be 100% on board with helping those in need because that is what I'm called to do. He told me when I said that, he knew I was indeed his wife. All of his prayers to the Lord of what he wanted in the wife, he saw in me. And all of my prayers that I wanted in the husband, I saw in him. He was a bit skinnier than I would have liked, but who cares? Love, I mean real love, it has no rule for vanity. But the Lord in his goodness has made our eyes and our hearts only for each other. Oh, and if you're wondering if he's rich, no, he is not rich, not in money, but he's rich in love, rich in charity, rich in character, rich in looks.
because he is fine as wine. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So, yeah, all that's good enough for me. Even still, I know his future is bright. The Lord will indeed bless him with riches because he can be trusted with it to help those in need. Right now, though, we are fully trusting in total dependency on the Lord to provide for us for our upcoming wedding and to provide for us for the things my, hu my husband needs to make an income to provide for a family. As I told you, my husband was on his way to being a professional soccer player. An accident he was in made that not possible. The Lord has blessed him, though, with many gifts and talents, and he knows it. He's also an artist and a jack of many, many trades. Right now, we are in need of the tools and machines he will need to work on his artwork to be able to make a living for the family the Lord has promised us. I will be moving away from Mother Elisha. About five hours away is where we will be living. The Lord has blessed us with a home in a small town, but we are in need of many things like a bed, a fridge, curtains, you know, the necessities a home needs to live in. I will also be starting my own outreach where I will be reaching out and feeding and ministering to those of lesser means as Mother Elisha and I have been doing here in Accra. For so long, I put off this testimony because I literally hate the sound of my own voice. It makes me cringe, to be honest. But as Mother Elisha says, it's not about me. It's about souls. So here, I find, I've finally done it. I can get this weight off my shoulders. I want to let you all know, I will also be making a YouTube channel of my own called Ruthie's Heart. This is also the Lord's doing because I definitely do not want to make a YouTube channel. And that's the truth. But I have to be obedient to what the Lord is calling me to do. I hope you all come and check it out. Don't look for it to be anything like Mother Elisha's channel. Because I guarantee you it won't be that great. <laughs> I'm just going to do what the Lord is telling me. I'm the least of the heart dwellers. So please don't look for perfection in me. Lord, I don't want to do this. But hey, that's life. Doing things you don't want to do for the glory of the Lord. Okay, guys. I hope this is the end of this testimony. Because I'm tired. I love you all. Bye. Exclusive from NigerChoice.com.ng I think that I would never fall in love And then you showed me that you could be everything I want I gave my heart away They put it on the shelf And took it down only to break it into pieces And then you came around Picked me up off the floor You put me back together I couldn't believe it Let me get this straight You the one to take You just wanna be someone I can always turn to Right until the end Can you say that again? I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure that I heard you I waited for you my whole life You don't know what you mean to me If you ask me to be your wife I would turn around and say You mean to tell me that I could have you whenever I want I could tell you that I love you when you love me too No more waiting forever on love But I would wait all over again if it means I get you I've never been more sure of the unknown Exclusive from NigerChoice.com.ng Yeah, my search is done Now when you said to me Will you be my wife for the rest of my life? For better or worse, baby, no, these ain't just words to me So take me to church, we'll be forever